Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today is Azita Avani, who is CEO Americas for Rakuten Symphony. Welcome, Azita. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, we are going to be discussing Open RAN, so let me first of all ask you, what is the current status of Open RAN in the industry? Guy, it's a pleasure to be talking to you. Uh, the state of Open RAN in this industry has really gone through a remarkable progress since uh, the last uh, 12 uh, to 14 months. And that is uh, obvious in the what was in the Mobile World Congress 2023 versus what we saw in 2022. So uh, at the last Mobile World Congress in 2022, people were still talking about, oh, is the uh, the open run ready? Are we, you know, how is the deployment? Is greenfield versus brownfield? That this Mobile World Congress, um, as I'm sure you've noticed as well, that no one is doubting that open run is the way to go. Whether it's the brownfields, whether it's the uh, greenfields, uh, the, all the vendors uh, were, were uh, having plans and roadmaps for open run. So, and in addition to the industry itself, governments also picking up on this more and more. Uh, of course, Japan government was always uh, very supportive. The U.S. government, the U.K. government, a lot of other uh, governments are jumping on the bandwagon, and they see it as a way to bring advanced communications to the masses at very affordable prices. They're seeing it as a way to introduce trusted and uh, resilient uh, supply chain and as a way of really upskilling their, their workforce as well. Um, and, and we really see this big movement towards uh, Open RAN. And uh, we are, of course, very happy about it. We uh, ourselves have uh, as you know, we've uh, deployed uh, 4G and 5G now across three continents, and uh, it includes both uh, greenfields and brownfields. So we're very optimistic, and we are hoping that this uh, goes even faster with everyone um, now coming uh, on board with Open Run. So there's good progress that we're seeing, but what would you say are the key success factors for Open Run now? So, Guy, as you know, the open RAN itself uh, starts with the disaggregation of RAN, right? So we go from these stovepipes to horizontal layers where they're interfacing with each other using standard open and uh, interoperable interfaces. So that's that's at one level with disaggregation of RAN. Then we have disaggregation of the software itself. So we're going from telecom uh, software that just generally monolithic custom software into disaggregating it into microservices, then uh, put them into containers. And these containers are now, if you can put them on a unified cloud that is, uh, that is uh, orchestrated by Kubernetes and, and being able to run these efficiently on COT hardware. And all of that being able to handle not just IT uh, type of workloads, but also a telecom type of net uh, workloads. So we're able to bring in high availability, bring in scalability, the performance that we need, the latencies that we need in telecom and disaster recovery and, and failover and things that, that we need in, in telecom to bring all that uh, specific telecom requirements. So, so all of those things are needed for open RAN, plus the fact that we need a, a lot of automation so if you think about just uh, breaking the RAN into uh, into parts without bringing automation in, that's not the way that, that your open RAN is successful. So you have to bring in that level of automation to be able to, uh, to, to orchestrate your workloads automatically, to be able to do failover automatically, to be able to uh, roll out a an update that you may want to do for your network, and if that doesn't work, to be able to roll it back. So all of those things have to be done uh, uh, in an automated fashion. So you don't have to always think about uh, think about scaling by by bringing more people in, uh, because that, that obviously adds to a lot of uh, cost and inefficiencies and introducing more errors into your system. So. Uh, so I would say those things, disaggregation of RAN, disaggregation of software, having a unified cloud and bringing massive automation running on COT servers. So those are all uh, key success factors for Open RAN. 
So given those three success factors uh, that, that you, you mentioned, um, what about for a brownfield operator, in, an operator with an existing established legacy network? How should such an operator best consider adopting Open Run? Yeah, so uh, I mean, they're, they're, uh, obviously for a uh, brownfield, they already have an existing network. They have systems that they've been uh, running in their network, they've made investment in those. So for those, we are not talking about a, a complete overhaul, uh, you know, like a revolutionary approach. It's really a more of an evolutionary approach. Brownfields are spending uh, lots of investment in their networks every year. So if they can think about how am I going to allocate more of this investment in, in open RAN. So if I'm getting a new spectrum, if I'm moving to 5G, depending on where in the world, the operators are. Uh, so how can I think about uh, introducing more of open RAN, more of automation, more of cloud and and uh, the, the disaggregated uh, RAN and, and software into my network, right? So so uh, either you, know, you have a, like, let's say you're deploying a new 5G on a new spectrum, you could uh, consider doing that uh, using open RAN. If you're thinking of bringing automation even with your physical uh, network functions today and, and, and getting that going, uh, upskilling your, um, your, um, your workforce, you know, just making sure that they understand cloud, they understand um, the new modern software uh, methodologies that uh, they're, they're feeling comfortable bringing AI and ML into their, uh, into their network. But just, just generally speaking, really thinking of their a network as code, as something that they can program, uh, that, that would go a long way. Well, if we keep the focus on these operators with existing operations, what are the challenges for them with regard to Open RAN? Some of these challenges is that whole FUD factor that, that, that's still out there. You know, the fear, uncertainty, doubt that uh, people are thinking, oh, with uh, Open RAN, uh, whether the technology is ready, which we all know right now it's the technology is ready, there's nothing there. Or that they talk about sustainability, which of course that's also taken care of, which respect to security, that's, uh, you know, the Open RAN actually brings in more visibility, more control into your network. So the security can yeah, and handle even better rather than doing these black boxes where you don't really know what uh, kind of security are in there. So I think that there is uh, that FUD that, that hopefully will clear away soon. And there is some uh, potentially the, the existing uh, incumbent vendors may feel that open run is a threat to their business. So um, that might uh, slow things down a little bit. Uh, and But I think in general, if the operators start thinking of their network as a programmable sort of living entity that they can automate and they can bring in innovation uh, into their network the way they want to see it rather than being locked in to the uh, to uh, to specific solutions from specific vendors where they can uh, they cannot differentiate as much uh, that uh, it, you then you're able to uh, deal with this and tackle these challenges. Um, so I would say that uh, the other major thing is about the organizational structure. You know, as uh, Telus CTO uh, Ibrahim Gideon mentioned at a, at a conference uh, a few weeks ago, um, you know, bringing automation, bringing these uh, things to a organization that's uh, currently like in a siloed fashion uh, might be a bit challenging, right? So we also need to think about the organization. You know, how was the organization shaped? It was based on the way the, the networks were deployed before. So now if we open up the architecture, open up the network itself, we also need to open up our our organization, think about it differently, you know, have that uh, open mindset and be able to look at the entire system holistically. Um, so those are some of the things that uh, might be challenging for the way things are today. But again, uh, with that mindset of uh, open mindset, then we can all uh, tackle these challenges. You've discussed some of the challenges already, but we also hear claims that Open RAN is more complicated than the more traditional deployments. For example, it's multi-vendor, it needs integration, etc. So how do you respond to this? Yeah, so uh, for one thing, Guy, as you know, we have been 
uh, talking about network function virtualization and software-defined networking for a long time. I remember the seminal paper on this came out in uh, October of 2012. So it's been more than a decade. So it's not like something that we've just thought about it now. And and so, but the, the whole industry has come a long way since then. The, the big benefit of Open RAN is that the telcos are now in charge of their innovation. They can pick and choose from the components that they want. So that creates a lot of competition that gets rid of this vendor lock-in and it enables them to differentiate themselves the way they, that they want to differentiate themselves rather than having the same uh, custom appliances that uh, everyone else has. So from that perspective, I think that the benefits uh, are quite a lot. And the complexity is the fact that, of course, it's a new uh, approach and it uh, breaks things down in smaller pieces. So you have more choice. So with that, uh, freedom of choice, it comes in the responsibility of being able to integrate these things together. So uh, so there is a little bit more system integration that needs to be done. But for that, the, there are various ways that it can be handled. For example, in Rocket and Symphony, our technology stack, we uh, picked and choose from the best of breed from various parts of this system. And they all have been uh, pre-integrated, uh, pre-tested, even verified in actual uh, operator environment. So when we bring it to the market, to the telcos, they could choose the entire stack, uh, like in one-on-one, -on -one. they can choose the entire stack and that way the time to market gets faster and they can take advantage of that without breaking and vi violating any of these open standards. So if an another operator wants to choose uh, like the automation layer, but they want to bring in other layers themselves and do the system integration on their own, they have that choice as well. So uh, the complexity is really the more of a perception because it's a new thing, but the, these are the kinds of things that we've been doing uh, all along in all kinds of industries. I mean, uh, you don't want to, uh, you know, back when we had the mainframe networks that the computer came in from one vendor and you were kind of stuck with that. And now even as consumers, you know, we buy our laptop from one vendor, we buy operating system from another, applications come from all over and we don't even blink at that, right? So that's something that uh, has gotten so easy even for consumers. So I think because we are at the early stages of Open RAN, uh, the newness and the novelty of this seems uh, complex and the system integration piece of it is new. So, um, but but that's just something that uh, the, the, the benefits outweigh the, the kinds of uh, uh, system integration uh, issues that you need to deal with. Now, there's a lot of new technology that's associated with Open RAN, but at times it feels like this is more than just a technological choice. What else, Azita, needs to be changed when operators are considering Open RAN? Yeah, so that's a that's a very very good question. Uh, I think uh, again for me the first thing comes from the mindset. You know, my background is in uh, software development as a as a computer scientist. It's it's very refreshing to me that after uh, all this time now uh, the telecom uh, network is now uh, being powered by software. So the first thing to think about is that this is. A, a system that you're not bound by the limits of hardware and then the people that have to go fix the, these uh, pieces of hardware. Just changing that mindset and saying, this is now a, a, a piece of code. My network is code. And I have uh, developers that are going to be able to change these, or I'm going to work with various vendors that are going to be able to bring me the kinds of innovation that I need. So that mindset to me is, is huge because then you look at your uh, support staff as not somebody that you, you send out to the field to go fix things and, or um, put in uh, various uh, patches and various equipment. You think of your network as a uh, as a software uh, program and you think about your um, support staff as 
you know, service reliability engineers that maybe spend half of their time just coding on new ways of automating things. So that the whole notion of automation is, is really huge, being able to simplify your network, making it go to software and bringing that the automation and your support staff is continually looking at how do I, uh, how do I make this easier the next time? So if I'm doing something twice, I won't do it, have to do it manually. I will uh, put it in a program. Uh, and that, that program, programmability is not just in the pieces of software that you buy from vendors, but in the way you operate the network. And so as such, instead of having uh, an organization that is siloed by experts in different uh, vendors, you have uh, the, this sort of seamless way of holistically looking at your uh, your network. So to me, that is really a, a big part of not just the technological change, but the mindset change enabled by uh, the kinds of things that could be done in a softer powered network rather than softer powered and automation powered network rather than a uh, network that's powered by equipment and people that service those equipment. So if you th can think about the analogy of you're in a boat, instead of adding more people to row faster, you're really creating a spaceship that is autonomously driven. And so how do you, uh, how do you move from that rowing in environment with lots of people, lots of costs and so forth to something that is software based, uh, automated, and uh, you know, it moves much, much faster. And finally, Azita, what is your advice to any mobile operator out there considering their execution strategy moving forward? I think uh, for every operator, they need to think about whether they want to introduce new solutions into their network that is anchored in the past, or do they want to be pulled in by the force of the future and put in things that are this year's model? Why would you want to put last year's model into your network that then stays in your network for 10 years, 15 years. So I, I think uh, all the investments that go into the network needs to be seriously considered for deploying open RAN, deploying cloud, deploying automation, because these are, these are really the future. So instead of, you know, uh, the, the doing uh, an update in six months, if you're able to do it in six days, if you're um, doing your, um, the site provisioning in four days, you know, if you can do it in four minutes, if you can, you know, do, do your software, act, yeah, your customer activation, instead of doing it in uh, three hours, you can do it in three minutes, you know, that sort of digital force that goes and it starts as snowball gaps here and there, but then this could apply to every part of that process. So the gaps between the doing things the traditional way and doing things the new way really get into this avalanche and it'd be much, much harder in the future to try and fill the gap. So the sooner you get onto this wave uh, in the future, the better off you are. And then you're able to then offer things at lower cost. You're able to then um, differentiate yourself and add services to generate more revenue on top of the same cloud that you're building to offer the network. Then you're able to add more services uh, to, to generate revenue. So I would say, you know, just uh, <laughs> put the, uh, the, the, as much force that you have uh, in, in your, keep in your power to move as fast as you can because if you don't there are others that will and uh, you don't want to get left behind you certainly don't well we must leave it there for now azita good talking with you again and thank you so much for sharing your views with us today thank you very much guy it was a pleasure talking to you mm -hmm.